Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this tutorial course, you are gonna learn how to make a timer app for Android. We are gonna make this app in Kotlin and you will learn how to make the UI. Then we are gonna make a basic timer, which is gonna be only able to run in foreground. Then we are gonna upgrade the timer to make it also run in background. And we are gonna control it from notifications too. Then we are gonna create settings for the timer where a user will be able to set the timer length. So now without further ado, let's get right to it. We're gonna name this application Timer Tutorial and make sure that you have Kotlin support ticked on. Click Next, Next again, and we wanna start off with Basic Activity. Now next, the activity name should be Timer Activity and click Finish. All right, now click on this triangle right beside App, then Res, Layout, and let's open Activity Timer. And right down here we have a floating action button. On the screen is located in the bottom end, so in the bottom right corner if you are using the left to right layout. In this application we are gonna have three floating action buttons, one for play, then another one for pause and another one for stop. Let's make the one for stopping the timer first. So its ID should be fab stop and as you can see it's a bit close to the edges of the screen. Let's make it a bit more distant. For that we should change the layout margin. So click on it, and where it was previously written 16 dp, it's now going to write diamond fab margin. That's where those 16 dp, otherwise known as density independent pixels, are defined. If you click on this add diamond slash fab margin and press Ctrl B, it's going to take you to where it's defined. And let's make a new diamond. Its name will be fab bigger margin, and it's gonna be 64 dp. By the way, this diamonds file which we are now editing is located under values here. Right here, values, diamonds. Now let's get back to activity timer and let's change the margin to be fab bigger margin. And it's already starting to look a lot better. But we still have this weird email icon on this floating action button. Let's change it. Open drawable folder, right click on it and let's create new vector asset. Click on this icon and search for stop, ok, change its name to just IC stop and then next and finish. Let's do the same for play icon, so new vector asset and now finally let's do the same thing for the pause icon. Alright now double click on stop and let's change the color to be white, so FFF and do the same thing with play arrow and pause. Once we have that, let's go back to activity timer and change this src compat to add drawable slash ic stop. That's cool, but we have an error. To use vector drawable compat, you need to set android.defaultconfig.vectordrawables.use support library to be true. For that, we need to open Gradle scripts, go to build.gradle for the module app, and inside default config, let's write vector drawables.use support library is equal to true. And now let's press on sync now in the upper right corner and we are good to go. Now let's copy this floating action button, paste it two times, the middle one will be called fab pause and the last one will be fab start. The gravity for fab pause should be bottom center and let's also change its icon to be IC pause and then the gravity for the fab start should be bottom start and its icon should be IC play arrow. Cool, now we have the floating action buttons sorted. Now let's go to contenttimer.xml and right here we have a text view. Let's set its ID to be equal to text view countdown and we are gonna set its text from Kotlin code. But we still should have something displayed as text when we are designing. For that we are gonna change Android namespace to tools namespace and whatever has tools namespace, it's not going to be displayed in the application after it's built and on device. We're just gonna see it in the designer right here. And let's change its text to say 10 minutes. Let's also change the text size to be 70 SP, which are scale independent pixels. Whenever you are working with text size, you should always set it to be in SP and not in DP. Text appearance should be app compad large, so this one. And that's about it for this text view. Now we are gonna make the beautiful progress bar or actually the progress circle. The problem is that we cannot use the progress bar which Android provides. That's because we wanna have a circular determinate progress bar. Determinate means that we can set the progress ourselves. 
it's not gonna be just constantly spinning around. We wanna set its progress to be precisely what we want to be. If we wanna set precise progress and use what Android gives us, we would need to use the line progress bar and not the circle. Because of that, we need to use a third party library. Luckily, there's an awesome library material progress bar. So let's go to the browser. This is the library and obviously links in the description. We wanna scroll down. And right here it says integration, we wanna copy this line, go to Android Studio to build a Gradle for the module app, and right inside dependencies we wanna paste this line and sync. Now let's go back to content timer XML and let's create a material progress bar with and height will be wrap content and let's click on it in constraint layout and let's anchor it to right, bottom, left and top. All right, and now we are gonna scale it up. And a bit more, and that's about right. And as you can see, width and height are not equal. Let's change it by setting width to be 306 dp as well. And now we could technically be good to go. However, in the GitHub repository, it says that you should always set the min width and min height instead of width and height directly. So let's set min width to be 306 dp. And let's do the same thing with mean height, so 306 dp, and let's change width and height to wrap content. We did this just to make sure that we are doing what the author of this library suggests. Let's set the ID of this material progress bar to be progress countdown. And even though now the progress bar is all nice and visible, it's not going to work if we left it like it is now. In order for it to have the functionality we want, we need to set its style to be add style widget material progress bar dot progress bar. This is gonna make it so that we can no longer see it in the designer, but inside the app it's going to be visible once we set its progress. And now there is just one thing regarding the UI of this timer activity left, the toolbar. Let's open the menu folder inside res and double click on menu timer. This is the menu of the toolbar right up here. Let's make the preview a bit bigger so you can see it nicely. And over here we have one menu item, action settings. We want to change this show as action from never to if room. And we also want to add an icon. So let's right click on drawable, new vector asset, click on icon and search for settings. Let's select this one and OK. Rename it to just IC settings. And let's also change its color to be white. So FFF again. Cool, and now we want to set icon to be IC settings. And it's already starting to look really nice. And that's it for the first part of this course in which you are going to learn how to make a timer app for Android and Kotlin. In this part we only made the UI, but this is really important because in the next part we are going to be using this UI from the code. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you want to get the code from this tutorial, click on the link in the video description which is going to take you to resocoder.com. If this tutorial helped you with creating Android UI, give it a like and also share it with others. Leave a comment if you have anything to say, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.